US national broadband plan calls for speeds of up to 100 megabits per second in 10 years' time by 2020. Now, that's a far cry from today's average of less than 5 megabits per second. But here in Chattanooga in Tennessee, residences and businesses can access 1 gigabit speeds right here today. The project um, first started really is development for our smart grid. Um, we are an electric, municipally owned electric utility um, and as such we, we began looking at fiber about 15 years ago as a way to provide more reliable electricity and give our, give our ratepayers options to manage their energy usage. Um, as we began to explore that, those options, we realized that we could use the same fiber infrastructure to overlay second generation broadband uh, products um, for our folks here, um, give competition a chance here and give our folks choices and alternatives. If we were only going to read meters, we wouldn't need the bandwidth. Uh, we're not planning on just reading meters. We're planning on interfacing with our customers in terms of controlling appliances that requires more bandwidth. And we're talking about using all of the different uh, sources of information to operate our electric system. And when you start doing that, the real issue becomes real time. You, you don't need to have minutes or hours of delay in, in both collecting the information and using it. So the fiber becomes a, a real necessity in terms of giving us real time communications. When we launched our in communications 10 years ago, we did have to get permission from our state legislature. At the time, um, it, that provided an environment that was conducive to, to provide competition in the state. And we really just layered on the video services and internet services to homes and, and uh, everyone ha has access to the infrastructure now. We serve 170,000 homes and businesses, about 145,000 homes about uh, 25,000 businesses, 3,000 of which are fairly large industrial customers. Uh, we have the fiber in front of about 155,000 so far. We will be in front of all of the homes and businesses by the end of December. We have huge uh, 288 count fiber rings north and south of the river. Um, we engineer this for every single premise that we know today, plus 25% on top of that, and, and that's vacant lots, it's, it's everything. Uh, you know, some folks may say we've over engineered it, we think we've engineered it for the future. Most of the cost is born in, in installing the fiber, so why not go ahead and do it when it's least expensive to, pr to provide that backbone? There are a couple of reasons for offering a gig. The first is simply to demonstrate that we have a network capable of providing a gig, and we can literally put a gig anywhere on that network, any of those 170,000 homes and businesses. And when you can offer that gig, in effect, you're saying we can provide services to any type of business that can come to Chattanooga. If you're a very large business or if you're a business that uh, sends a lot of pictures, and pictures could be something, it could be uh, CAT scans, uh, x-rays, there are all kinds of businesses that need that type of bandwidth. We have, uh, frankly, more uh, businesses looking at Chattanooga than we know of at any time in our existence. Uh, Volkswagen is an extremely important part of that because uh, along with Volkswagen, you get all the suppliers who, who supply Volkswagen and they hire people. Uh, the Volkswagen plant uh, will wind up being somewhere in the 2,000 people range, but there may be another uh, six to 8,000 people who are working in those supplier plants. For us, had we scaled this system for 5, 10, 12, even 100 megs, we would really be shortchanging the community. So we don't presume to know, and, and frankly, we're excited about new things being developed, and we wanted to provide an environment or an incubator for technology companies to come here, for innovators, for entrepreneurs. So for us, it just made sense that we'd open it up as the widest amount or the greatest amount of bandwidth that we could provide, and today that's a gig. I have no idea what tomorrow will bring. Whatever that is, we'll, we'll be happy to open it up for folks to experiment with. Everything is competitively priced except the gig, and we don't have a clue whether we're competitively priced because we don't have a competitor. Uh, to be honest, we price the gig at the same price that we were charging for 100 megs. Three months ago, in the dead of night, we doubled all of the Internet speeds for all of our residential customers. I think at that time we had about 12,000 residential customers and uh, it took us about an hour and a half and with the next bill we sent out we just said we've doubled your speeds 
and your price is the same. Enjoy. The benefits of the smart grid alone more than pay for the system. Uh, when you're looking at cutting outage minutes by 40 percent, that's 40 million dollars a year savings to our ratepayers. Um, that alone would fund the system, but then when you layer on top of that the other benefits, um, uh, not to mention the revenues from providing the broadband services, the system actually is paid for twice. I think if I had uh, if I had anything to tell anybody, it would be don't go cheaply. If you're going to be competing with established uh, communications companies, you want to have something that's better than they have to offer. And the real value of, of the fiber is that it can offer very high quality products. So we uh, we put a lot of effort into making sure that our video, that our internet was uh, the best in the world. And, I think that's the way to go. I think people buy value, they don't really want to buy the cheapest. This is Guy Daniels for Connected States of America in Chattanooga, Tennessee.